I really like the game of table football. I was in a meeting with all the groups where we talked about how could we convey scientific principles in a playful and engaging manner for the general public to understand. And the laser group told me about this game they have. It's a little tabletop game where they place mirrors and you have to basically solve a maze to get the laser beam somewhere you want. And I thought like, why not make a game out of that? And why don't we soccer theme it? I mean, we have the Women's UEFA Cup going on right now, so that's the perfect opportunity to take that. So my idea was actually to combine this laser maze idea with a game of table football. And so basically, instead of a ball that you kick around, you use a laser. So that was an opportunity I couldn't pass on. We actually got the OK from the Swiss national team to use their players in our game, which is awesome and i was able to try something new that i wanted to try for a long time to generate figurines with ai out of a single image so follow me along i will explain everything i did to you i have two days to finish it it's currently saturday we build up on monday and hey if you live in switzerland maybe come by and play a game against me So this video is actually an official collaboration between our channel and the University of Basel, which I am very proud of. So let's dive right into what I did. I wanted to try a functionality of the website Maker World for a long time. So you know they have all these little macros and AI systems where you can create 3D data or change 3D data or whatever. And they had one in particular where I was very, very skeptical about if it actually works. So the thing is that MakerWall says you can upload one single photo of a person, like a shot like that, and generate a complete 3D bust, 3D model with it. And I wanted to try that. And what better opportunity than me generating images or generating 3D models of people I can't 3D scan. Because of course, the Swiss women's national team is way too busy to uh, like come here and get scanned by me. So I basically took from their player register that I have on their website, photos of 10 different um, players. Two out of defense, four on the midfield and four in storm. And I gave it to the AI system to generate the 3D model. Uh, as you see on that footage, this was decently successful, I would say. When I gave European Woman to that AI algorithm, it did kind of like an uncanny effect. And it also like, it looks like it also just calculates one side of the image and the other side is a mirror image. And so you would have like a, a line here where it gets really like pointy up forward. So what I did is I generated all the data of the different players in this AI system and then simply exported it as an STL and imported it into Blender. And there I manually cleaned up everything. So I moved around the cheekbones and the chin. I moved it up with a very big um, pen that actually um, can grab onto big bulks of the STL and just pulls it up. If you want to know how something like this works, I have a video about how to clean up your 3D scans like a pro. And there I use some of the same techniques. It comes very naturally, it flows a little bit. So I'm not good at sculpting, I'm just learning, but I was able to make this into this and just give it back a little bit more realism. So after I modeled all of those images, I actually gone ahead and I downloaded a collection of female football players. And then I did what every good human does and cut off their heads. <laughs> So after I cut off their heads, I of course imported what I modeled, those 3D busts, and I aligned it um, after scaling the figure into size, to the size I wanted to have. I aligned the head in a natural position, more or less, to the player itself, depending on what she does. And then I used a Boolean function to combine them and I cleaned the contact points. And after that, I solidified the whole model, which means it only keeps the outer shell and everything inside gets deleted because in 3D printing, that can uh, give you double volumes. So we want to avoid that. Then I imported it into Bamboo Lab Studio and I have this, I, I constructed this little base using CAT. I merged those two prints and printed them on the H2D printer from Bamboo Lab because I wanted to give them red coats. 
If you're wondering why I don't write their names on or give them like all the markings of the tricot and stuff like that is um, while we got the okay from the Swiss national team to use the likings of the player, they are not allowing us to use their merch, which I think is fair enough. After everything printed, I simply cleaned up the print and next step is to produce the actual table because I don't want this game to simply be played on like a plain table with like a piece of paper on there or something like that. If I'm going to do that, I will do our national team justice and build them a custom made table. I started with the inner area of the table. Basically a simple box with plain butt joints, no fancy miters here. Before I built anything, I modeled the whole table in CAD. You know, measure twice, model once. The core is standard particle board. Affordable, sturdy, does the job. First, I cut everything to length, then rip the board in half to get the final height of the inner box. For the tabletop, I went with those nice laminated beach panels. Solid, stable and they just look clean. The panels were too long for my tiny table saw, so I brought out the track saw. The shorter side pieces fit back on the table saw. I cut them to length and ripped them down to size. And yes, I unplugged the table saw before measuring. Safety first. <laughs> At least this time. After cutting everything, I marked and trimmed the miters. What you don't see is me completely messing up the first board by cutting the miter on the wrong side. But hey, mistakes happen. I'll patch that later. For the big outer frame, I wanted a proper miter glue up. Try doing it on the table saw first. Yeah, that didn't work out. Plan B. I used the 45 degree follower bit on the router and ran it along the table edge. Worked like a charm for a perfect miter. With all the raw materials ready, it's time to assemble the inner box. The glue up is hidden inside the table, so we're keeping it simple. Butt joints with dowels, glue and screws to hold everything tight. Next up, the outer frame glue up. Here I wanted nice clean miters. I aligned everything with trusty old biscuits for extra strength. For clamping, I improvised with these massive aluminum blocks I had laying around. Forgot my miter clamps at home. Back to the tabletop. Since I rough cut it with a jigsaw, I remarked the 45 degree angles and cleaned it up on the belt grinder. I even 3D printed my first ever pocket hole jig for this. Little glue, two screws, solid as it gets. To attach the top to the frame, I made small wooden cleats from leftover scraps. Always nice when nothing goes to waste. I sanded the top flush, especially around the miters, starting with rough 60 grit on the random orbit sander. For the inner edge, I stuck down some long plexiglass strips I had found in the shop. Those acted as a perfect guide. Then I cleaned the edge with a flush trim bit on the router. After that, I rounded over the inside and outside edges and sanded everything up to 220 grit. Buttery smooth. Last step for the inner box, the bottom plate. Another simple butt join, quick and easy. See those little screws? They're not random. This table might be moved around a lot, even outdoors, so the screws let me realign everything after the wood expands or contracts. And now my favorite part, the finish. I went with rustic oak stain and later added a wax finish. Can't help it, I just love dark wood tones. I mean, look at that face, pure woodworking joy right there. The bottom plate of the outer box got cut with openings on both long sides. Perfect for running cables in and out wherever I need. For the legs, I used fresh boards cut with a template. Done. 
double them up for extra strength and so that the fasteners don't carry the whole load. Everything had to be flush. So after screwing the boards together, I cleaned them up with a random orbit sander. I masked off the feet and applied the same finish as the top. Gotta keep things consistent. I love how the legs angle outwards, but the grain stays vertical. That's the look I was going for. And honestly, nobody's more surprised that it worked than me. Most people don't have industrial 3D printers at home. That's why I'm excited to announce our partnership with one of the most competitively priced and high quality manufacturers out there. PCBWay. PCBWay is very renowned for their PCB manufacturing capabilities. They also offer industrial grade 3D printing and with worldwide shipping it will show up within days on your doorstep. Our figurines are done. The table looks immaculate. I love it. And now we have to go into actually making it playable. So I got the laser from our laser group. It's just a little visible green light laser. Uh, I think it's like 502 nanometers and it will sit here in the side of the table. I haven't put it in yet because I actually want to dial in the height after I checked all my figurines. So for the figurines itself, I got these little mirrors. These mirrors are like microscopically perfect, so they don't scatter laser light. They really, really precisely reflect it. And that is needed if we want to reflect over like maybe 10 figurines. It depends on how good you are in playing this basically. So we have to actually put those mirrors in and then dial in our figurines by basically putting little wedges below them or whatever. I haven't thought that step through. Oh, this mirror doesn't want to go in. That's not good. I tested it already. Here is a mirror. So the other figurines work. So let's check. Is this mirror just bigger? Then we go in. Let's take another one. Or let's break everything and start over. <laughs> okay, I have to see that I angle them correctly. So there's a little like recess in there that they have to go in. Yeah, it's super tight so they don't fall out. So this one worked. And what I actually forgot while printing those is to differentiate them into teams. So I have to figure out a way to mark them, team one, team two. Yeah, it's all the Swiss national team. So I made them with the same outfit because it's one team. So you're actually playing a training game. Yeah, I'm breaking stuff left and right. Huh? Dab of glue here, dab of glue there. It's always just getting the mirrors started because like on the lower where it's like 100% infill, the whole layer actually expanded a little bit. So you have kind of a lip to get past that. You need a lot of force. Yeah, and I transferred those forces into my figurines apparently. God damn it. So now we reached Paralympics. <laughs> Uh, the design is very human thing, you know? <laughs> Grab some glue. I hope I did not do voodoo dolls and now half of the Swiss national team is out because of broken ankles. Me solely responsible for us losing the European championship would be bad. Good. A second thing we have is, of course, for a project like that, we have a lot of sponsors. So what I did is basically in every football stadium, you have on the side of the playing field and behind the goals, you have these advertisement, how would you call them? Like now there are screens, but before that it was just like fixed installed posters. And so I actually printed those little triangular thingies and they go basically here. And I printed out all the different sponsors and partners we have. 
and I want to place them all around the playing area. So we have those, more are printing right now in the background. And like I, I made it that you can simply slide them in and then you just put them together and it will actually do something like a banner. If you're wondering why I chose to do it in this marble style white PLA is uh, there is a simple explanation for it. I thought I had white loaded. So yeah, now we have marble at Oh, it's exactly every sponsor one. Okay, so we need to test our laser alignment a little bit. I will do it within the table to contain the laser. It's a non-lethal one. <laughs> it's uh, like, it, it can't damage. You can look into it, it will not damage really. That's the laser. It has just a green dot. But I think what is really cool, it kind of like has a pixelation to it. Do you see that? And it's super weird. The pixelation gets harder because that's like the spread. The further away you are, ah, you know what that could be? Dust on the lens. It was just dust on the lens, okay. So as you see, the laser goes very straight over there. It's a little low to the floor. So I will for now pry it up. So I want to test how the figurines bounce the light. If I have to adjust them, if they bounce it down. And so I will use the maximum length of the table and simply place my figurines in and shoot the laser over there. And you can already see like the height here and the height there means this figurine actually bounces the laser up. So I have to adjust that somehow. So I have to push in a little bit. And the laser is still too high because now if I place a figurine here, I can't reach the mirror. You see, it hits here. So this one has to be adjusted down. So I will probably add something small back here. Now the ultimate test. I want to bounce it with all the figurines and see how much my laser is distorted. I just broke the figurine. God damn it. To get past that, you need a lot of force. Let's break everything and start over. What the fuck? Ah, that, that was like super, super fake. Which is an illusion, evolution. Do you want to do a close up of the balls? The balls are just empty right now. What do you mean? 